Hi and welcome to another episode of Lou's Makes. My name is Lou and on here I talk about everything that I am making. <laughs> So welcome or welcome back to my podcast where I talk mostly about what I'm knitting. This is already the fifth episode and I'm so happy to talk to you. We do have a wonderful sunny day. So again, we do have some weird lighting going on possibly in this episode. <laughs> also, I tried filming this before but I got extremely annoyed just because there were some like gardening works happening um, in our backyard area. Like I am grateful for the work of the gardeners, but it was a lot. And then our neighbors also started vacuuming their apartment. I don't even know how it's possible that I can hear them vacuuming if I'm living like on top of them, but yeah, old buildings, I guess. It's fun. <laughs> Everybody wants to live in an Altbau, but if you do live there, you know it's cold, it's moldy and it's loud. Well, okay, <laughs> I'm rambling on. <laughs> so then I got something to eat and now I'm back and I hope now it stays as quiet as it is right now. There is like Mittagsruhe right now, it's a German thing, um, which means that you have to be quiet from like 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. And uh, yeah, I hope, I hope it stays quiet now. Luna is joining me on the windowsill. Maybe she'll come down at some point and uh, yeah, she keeps us company. <laughs> so these last two weeks I have finished my last winter sweater, which I'm going to talk about soon and other than that i have been like very monogamous with my knitting um i've knit the sporting knit scored by florence miller and i had lots of fun doing that this week i am also filming a special kind of video so i'm taking you through the week with me and i have challenged myself to style like one piece of knitwear for every day and for today, it's the April Cardigan by Petite Knit. I have knit this out of some hand-dyed yarn. It's the Urban Pearl High Twist Lux, I believe, in the color Damson in Distress, I think. And I've also held one strand of mohair with that, and that was the um, Drops Kid Silk mohair. And I really like what came out of it. If you do look really closely, it was one of my early knit pieces and uh, yeah, you can see a change in color with the arms, both of the arms actually. Yeah, I didn't know anything about like um, changing out different skeins, about dye lots, about helical knitting, anything like that. But I don't think you can really notice it. And I'm just very happy about this very successful knit piece that I like to wear a lot. And Luna wants to go into the bed sheets again. It's her favorite thing to do. And it annoys me just a little bit. Well, she managed to sneak under the blanket and now she's like the sandworm of Dune. I haven't watched Dune, but I've seen like reels and TikToks about like the sandworm thing. I don't know. She's doing that. <laughs> so let's jump into my finished objects. I've talked about this piece in my last episodes and it's the Yoga Sweater Winter by Ruka Nitz or Neringa Ruka. And this is it. It's completely done, bound off and I've already worn the sweater a few times. I'm actually gonna go and show you the yarns that I have still like left over from this project. Back with my yarn stash here. So I have knit this sweater out of the Alva Silk by Schachenmeier, which is a blend out of wool, cotton and silk. And this is how it looks like. It's a nice um, like blue shade. This is actually everything that I have still left over in the end. So this is like one and a half skeins um, total. And then I have also used the Chaos Yarn Organic Brushed Alpaca 
in the color Enigmatic. So these two together made this kind of fabric. So the sweater has like a high funnel neck, which I have not worn before or like knit before. And I have to say, I quite enjoy it. I was a little bit worried in the beginning that I would find this high neck a little bit like bothersome, but I actually quite enjoy the look. It looks very elegant, I feel like. And other than that, it's like a big oversized cozy sweater and I think the yarn combination made for something quite lightweight. Not really in weight, but in terms of like warmth. I feel like um, it's quite breathable still and not like the most like warm sweater that I own, which I did not want to knit, so that's great. The sweater has also quite a high um, split hem at the bottom, which I do enjoy as well. The only thing that I'm maybe a little bit surprised by is the fit of the whole sweater. I've talked about the gauge before and I actually like got out my measuring tape and measured this once again. And I actually hit gauge, which, it, which is weird because I've knit this two times. And the first time I thought I hit gauge and the sweater came out way smaller. So I don't know what happened here, but I want to be fair to the pattern and say like, I I am on gauge with this one and the measuring table that is provided in the pattern um, fits my measurements. I think the picture of the model wearing the sweater threw me off a bit since it looked like even bigger and also longer at the bottom. So the sweater is a little bit shorter than I had imagined like in the beginning, but I'm still fine with that. I'm I really enjoy wearing the sweater. I think it will get lots of use and yeah, I do like the color. I have to play around a little bit with my wardrobe. I have yet to wear the sweater in my styling my knits video, so you'll see what I do. Well, I think that's it for the sweater. I don't have anything more interesting to say. I would actually recommend this pattern. Make sure you hit gauge and also make sure to look at the measuring table and also like measure yourself accordingly to see how the sweater would fit on you. And that's actually it for my finished objects for this episode. My works in progress are like arguably a little bit boring because I have only knit one thing but I so much fun with it so I'm personally not mad about that and it's the Sporty Knit Scored by Florence Miller or Handmade by Florence on YouTube. So the Sporty Knit Scored was a pattern that had been lingering around on my queue for a long long time. I knew that I would enjoy this finished object quite a bit but for some reason I thought it was like a little bit boring to make which I can now say it's not boring, it's so fun and I would highly recommend it if you are like a similar style knitter like me <laughs> in terms of what motivates you to knit something. I finally got some yarn, some sock yarn actually, which she does not particularly like recommend you to use, but that's what I did. So the pattern calls for some uh, alpaca yarn, which has like a lot of drape. I think I'm now just gonna show you how far I have gotten. If you are following me on Instagram, you might have seen like some progress shots of that already. So this is the yarn I am using. This is the Schachenmaya Regia 6 ply, which is a 75-25 sock yarn in ADK weight. And the color is Anthracite. A nice dark gray because I thought I didn't want to firstly knit with a black yarn and I also wear lots of like black leggings and uh, tights so I wanted something to stand out just a little bit. So and this is the skirt so far. It looks really small but I can assure you it's fitting me really good. So the skirt is made up out of a skirt section obviously in a um, ribbing pattern 
and then there's also a shorts underneath and the shorts are like stock in it and you are doing some double rip at the bottom this looks so cute <laughs> kind of <laughs> About the construction, you do start off with a double knit, no, with a folded over waistband here. And there is like a pearl row on top, which is like quite cute, a nice little detail, and also helps the fabric to fold over nicely. And yeah, you put in an elastic band to make this like very comfortable and well fitting on your waist. And then you knit the skirt first. You also do some short rows for like the bum. <laughs> so that the skirt is just a little bit longer in the back than in the front. And you actually do the same thing for the shorts. So then you knit and knit and knit for the skirt part, bind off. And then you actually pick up for the shorts from the inside again. Something interesting to talk about as well is the sizing, which I'm like really like happy about. So the skirt size actually depends on your natural waist, which is the point of your body, which will like naturally bend if you're like bending over, if you know what I mean. I've Googled that specifically because I was a little confused what that meant. And then you can actually choose a different size for the shorts underneath and the size of the shorts actually depend on the circumference of your thigh. So for me, I've gone with like a bigger size for the skirt and a smaller size for the bottoms for the shorts. Yeah, I do love when patterns do that just because it's more like size inclusive. And like a thing that I love about knitting is that you can like tailor your clothes to yourself and it's not like buying clothes commercially and feeling like you should fit the clothes rather than the clothes fitting you. You know what I mean. Now I would talk about like my process of knitting this cord because I did some things a little bit differently. So um, like I said, you started with the waistband on top and then the pattern asks you to knit together the edges of your fabric and then start the skirt. What I have done instead is to leave that part open and um, finish the skirt and the shorts before like folding it over and sewing in my waistband. And the reason for that is that I thought it would be a bit easier to like take out the waistband again at a later point in time like that. So you can see I have like a line of stitches here I have just like crocheted it shut with a crochet hook and like slip stitches. It's what I like to do. It's not as stretchy as knitting together your stitches, of course, but it works out for me. Firstly, I was a bit worried about the waistband coming undone because I'm not great at hand sewing yet. I've watched a tutorial and I think my sewing job was quite nice. I will put in a picture <laughs> um, and yeah. I was a little bit worried about my waistband coming undone, now I'm not, but anyways. And also I thought about like in the future that I could change out the waistband and make it like bigger or tighter depending on like weight fluctuation. Because I would find it absolutely sad if I could not wear the skirt in the future just because the waistband isn't fitting me anymore. And I've had had some like skirts and pants that I could not wear anymore just because they were like uncomfortable on like my stomach. And it would be just very, very sad if that would happen with like a hand knit piece. Also with sewing together the waistband, I left quite a bit of overlap so I can reuse this waistband in the future as well. And I can just sew it together again with just a little bit less of overlap. That's what I thought. Yeah, maybe I'm overthinking things, but that's what I like to do. <laughs> that's like the one like modification that I made on this pattern. And also, I don't know if you noticed, but I do have some, I do have my needles still attached to this project. Oh my God, there's so many ends, so many. My needles are still attached to this project because I bound off 
the skirt part a little bit too early and that's like totally on me <laughs> so I didn't really properly measure um, the length of the skirt I stretched my fabric a little bit too much and then when I went to try on the skirt I can also insert some clips of that and then when I tried on the skirt I noticed that the shorts were showing just a little bit in the back and I just needed to add some centimeters to the skirt part so I unraveled the cast off edge picked up my stitches again and now I'm just knitting like 10 more rows and then the skirt, scored, should be done. I'm also like challenging myself a little bit to get this piece done so that I can wear it for my video of styling my knits. Yeah, let's see if that happens. I really like to block my pieces before wearing them and there might not be enough time for this to completely dry, even if I finish it like today, to wear it like up until Saturday. Talking about yarn quantities, this is all I have left up until this point and there are only like five more rows that I have to knit. So I will be having some yarn left over, not too much, which I do like. I don't really love if a pattern tells you to buy like a certain amount of yarn and then you will be left with like multiple intact skeins and yeah then you're just left with more things in your stash that you don't know what to do with. So I'm quite happy that I won't have much left over after finishing this project. And because this is sock yarn, I am planning to use this up in like the contrast of a, like a DK weight sock. I really enjoyed making this just because it was something like different from a like typical sweater and you're also doing like something different every so often so it's not like a sea of stockinette that you have to knit for like 30 hours i think the most monotone part of this would be to knit like the three by three rib just in the middle of the skirt but other than that there are lots of like different parts where you measure like the length that you have knit and uh yeah, then you go over to doing something different and it keeps me like motivated. And it was really fun to see like a functional skirt and short coming together in one. I'm like already thinking about making this one in like cotton yarn. I've seen like one knitter on Instagram make this in like a white cotton, which looks super cute, just like a tennis skirt kind of. And you can of course just knit the skirt, just knit the pants whatever you prefer. I've also seen one person on the projects page on Revelry make a midi skirt out of this pattern, which also looked really, really great. So that's also an option. Yeah, I think this is a great pattern and I would highly recommend it. I never had a problem with one of Florence's patterns, so I really enjoy her style, her writing style, and I feel like the pieces that I make come out very successful. I'm excited to have this done and to wear it. It's also like quite cozy because I've worn this like for like half an hour when I tried it on the first time. And uh, yeah, it's such a nice winter, spring, autumn piece, I think. I will be sad when I'm done. I enjoyed this very much. Sometimes I really like knitting on just one thing and not having something to switch between. But then I really have to enjoy the piece. So yeah, that's saying something. I think I have rambled on enough about this specific project and now we're going over to my acquisitions and knitting plans. So another exciting thing that happened these past two weeks is that a dyer from Berlin has released a new base. I'm talking about a Kiezgarn Nora. Um, who's also from Berlin, just like me, and I do like to like support like uh, local artists, of course. And she has come out with like a summer base, which is the summer silk. And because I'm already like in a spring and summer mood, I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy a quantity of the yarn when she comes out with that. Um, there are just like a specific few 
colors that she released. So I picked the color Späti. And it came in a beautiful box with like blue and pink. Like these are my favorite colors. I have like two hangs that I can show you and one is already wound up in a ball. So these are the hangs of yarn. I got three. So this is the third one that I've already hand wound. Yeah. This yarn is a uh, burette silk, 100%, which I have not worked with before and I've read a little bit on that. And uh, burette silk is made by taking the scraps of silk production and making them into like a usable yarn. So it's basically like recycled, you could say. I think it's really, really cool. And this is like not your traditional silk i would say it's way way softer which i prefer and if you look really closely you can almost see some like fluffy like tweedy bits in there yeah so it doesn't have a lot of stretch but it's quite soft if you compare it to like other plant fibers apart from like cotton i think cotton can be like similarly as soft I have made like just a few summary knits so far. One was in a 100% cotton, which I thought the knitting experience was fine. And then I have also made something with a merino cotton, which I think is just perfect because you have like the mm, properties of the cotton. It's a little bit more breathy. And then you also have like the stretchiness of the wool to make the knitting experience just a little bit nicer on your hands. And then I've also made something out of a linen blend and that experience was not nice. It really hurt my hands. So yeah, thinking about that and thinking about purchasing some summer silk, I was kind of, yeah, just a bit worried if it would be as uncomfortable, but I can assure you it's not. I've already made a swatch and uh, try it out knitting with that. So I think it will be quite an enjoyable knit. Also, this is a fingering to sport weight kind of yarn, so a little bit thicker. I can also show you my swatch that I made just today. This is still a little bit wet. So yeah, I think this is such a pretty color as well as texture. I'm really, really happy with it. I hope the camera doesn't screw too much with the color but yeah it's a really nice pinkish tone and it's also like quite toned down with a like cool beige undertone i would say i was just a little bit worried that this like color would be a bit too close to my own skin tone but now having seen this in real life i think it's totally fine and in summer, when I do get a little bit of like a natural tan, it will be even better. I haven't told you what I am gonna make with that. So that's what we are going to talk about now. So before ordering some like expensive yarn, some luxury yarn, I like to think about what I want to make with it. So that I have a plan. I do like plans. Yeah, <laughs> I think we have established that. So first I was thinking about making a summer top. Nora from Kitzkan has like a um, shirt knit up in the summer silk base, which I thought looked super cute in like this dark blue or in like this vibrant blue, Kreuzberg blue, I think it's called. I was considering buying this color also, but yeah, I was first thinking about making a summer top, but then soon I was like, no, I'm gonna make this my summer project and I'm gonna buy a lot of yarn and I do want to make a dress which might sound completely crazy because it's gonna take a long long time well I have made like sweaters before and like tops and now a skirt so making a whole dress it's gonna be an experience and I'm looking forward to that it's gonna be a good challenge for me <laughs> so then I went to Ravelry again and I've done some scrolling on there and I'm first going to talk about the dresses that I don't think I'm going to make, but I have considered. So I am going to go to Ravelry so I can also tell you the names of the designers. I'm also going to 
like write down everything and put this in the description box as well so if you want to check something out you don't have to rely on my pronunciation <laughs> so the first dress that i thought about making was the born on the beach dress i guess by natalie pellick so this is a fingering weight dress which is quite boxy but it does have some gathering just above the chest which is a nice detail and then there are also lace panels that run like just under the arms up until the end of the dress and like the last like quarter or third of the dress is all lace which is such a nice detail and really makes this dress special when considering this dress i thought about leaving out the lace panels just on the sides and there are also people in the project pictures that have done that as well just because i personally would feel more comfortable with like my sides covered up and not showing like my underwear like this dress is pictured on the beach so as a beach cover-up i think like that would be totally fine for me personally you have to decide for yourself but yeah this also comes in kid sizes as well as adult sizes and there's also the seaside dress which is by Brianna Lupino. I've seen this dress made by Nerineri before. She made it with like a specific color fade of yarns, which looks so, so nice if you look at the project pictures. And it has a split on the bottom, which I like and I think will add like a nice flow and ability to move in this dress still. I think this dress would be better to make out of some like woolly yarn, some merino, so it's a little bit more stretchy than silk. That is just what I'm thinking here. And I really like this dress because it's like high cut. It does have a nice silhouette. Then there's also the Nada dress by Ulla Knitwear, which was a high contender for me here. I'm still thinking about this. I've seen this dress made by Emily of High Fiber Knits and this is just a stunning dress. It just has like 10 projects on Ravelry, which I don't understand. It's like such a nice pattern and there are so many options for it. I think you can choose between a low bag and a high bag, which is nice. You can of course like change the length of the dress. Maybe there's even like some modifications for like the front neck. I don't know though and this is a dk weight dress so you're holding sport like two sport weight yarns together um isaiah yarns specifically and this is such a stunning timeless dress i think it's so so nice and then i have also looked at some popular camisole patterns of petite knit as well as my favorite things knitwear because there are so many projects of of these like specific patterns so you can really go into like the projects page and filter by putting in just like dress into the search bar and people definitely have modified some of these like very popular patterns i'm not going to talk about anything in specific but if you're interested in that you can totally check that out with knitting a camisole pattern longer i do have to say i would be thinking about increasing in the hip area um, depending on your body shape of course but um, yeah it's really interesting to see what people have done with patterns and you can do so as well now we're coming to the dress that i really really want to make i'm so excited already <laughs> and that's the melidas dress by ines oliviera this is also a fingering weight dress of course and it's a full length dress that has like a button placket running like from the top to the bottom. You can also reverse this dress so you can either have like the buttons in the front or in the back and depending on that you will have a different shape or a different neckline. So with the buttons you kind of have like a deep V and um, on the other side of the dress it's more like what I'm wearing right now like a square neck. And what really got me with this pattern is that you can like completely tailor this to yourself which i find so cool like for inclusivity but i'm also like really interested in the knitting process of it all if i understood that correctly there is like an excel table that will calculate 
what you have to do for each step of the dress. So if you're reading the description, this dress was inspired by something that is like sewn. So this dress also has some darts and different kinds of like structural lines, which I find interesting, not just visually, but for construction reasons. Also, this dress is knit up flat because of the button band. It's a functional button band, which I find interesting. So that's a challenge as well. You're not just knitting in the round in stockinette for forever, but like knitting back and forth with knit and purl stitches. I don't personally mind that much. I do like to purl. Um, but yeah, when I started knitting, I actually hated purling. So I've come a long way and found like a good way for myself to purl. Because I was so excited for this project, I even went out to like a fabric and sewing store and picked out some buttons. Before I had the yarn actually. <laughs> so now is the first time that I can see both of these things next to each other. That's exciting! So lots of people in the project photos have chosen like a mother of pearl kind of uh, button. But I went for something slightly different. I'm gonna pick out just a few so I can show you how different each of them looks from each other. So these are the buttons that I have chosen. They are like kind of looking like a tortoise shell. I don't think my camera is really focusing on these tiny tiny things. I am gonna put in some shots of this. So now I'm seeing the buttons and the fabric um, with each other for the first time and I think it's a really really good pick. I am quite excited about that. I'm not gonna cast this on very soon. Um, it's rather like my very big summer project that I'm looking forward on making in the future. Um, I think I can cast it on like in springtime so that it's ready for summer. But I'm really planning on like one or two months of making time here. Some other things that I've thought about making are the Hemingway shorts by Lara Booth. This is an idea that came from my Sporting It Scored, of course, because I really enjoyed making shorts and I can see myself wearing like a cottony, plant fiber-y short in the summer that I've knit myself. That would be fun. The Hemingway shorts are knit in Drops Bell, which is really affordable and they have like quite a good color selection, I feel like. So this might be a plan that I will get to in summer. I have also been thinking about what I wanted to make with the leftovers of my yoga sweater winter. Um, I do have like, I don't know, one and a half skeins of this left. So like 75 grams of a sport weight. This is really not the biggest amount of yarn. I don't know if I can squeeze out a camisole. I might try or I will use this for like a stripy shirt. That should totally work. But we'll see. Other than that, I do want to get to some of my stash yarn. I still want to make the square neck camisole by Helen Biba. Maybe this will be my next cast on, just so I can get something out of stash. And I also really want to make my spring cardigan because I love wearing cardigans. This one is something that I wear quite often, but because it's like a fingering mohair kind of cardigan, it's pretty warm. And I can't really wear this above like 15 degrees Celsius. And then I've also talked about some lace socks. I don't know. I can show you the yarn that I'm thinking about using up for that. It's also a stash yarn. Where is it actually? I've lost it. Wait. Luna, don't do anything bad with the yarn. She's just sleeping. She's not even noticing that I talked to her. So here it is. This is actually the yarn that I had left over from this cardigan. So this is also a hand dyed yarn of Urban Pearl. I've got this at the Stephen and Penelope yarn store in Amsterdam when I visited last year. So that's a really cool memory, I think. And uh, yeah, I do have like 80 grams left of this. So that's why I thought on making some lace socks out of that. I have talked about 
lots of different patterns in my last episode so if you are interested in that you should just go like to the last I think 15 minutes of that episode and you can check some patterns out. I thought about making the Mercury Socks by Kim Droter and I honestly already started these socks by the I have frogged them <laughs> and that's because I broke my original sock needles with 2.25 millimeters and then well I didn't break them um, and when that happened I went and bought some small circumference needles to try them out. I have since learned that I don't like them so when I went and got the buttons for my dress, for my summer dress, I also picked up another sock needle, but they only had 2mm and 2.5mm. And I picked up the 2.5, which I don't know why I did that, because I'm more of a loose type of knitter, so I should have went for the 2mm needle. Because when I knit with a 2.5mm needle, it's more like knitting with a three millimeter just because of my specific tension. So if I want to start these socks again and get a like realistically sized sock for my feet, I will have to go out again and buy a different needle. That's what I might do soon. Also, can you see a theme of which colors I do like? <laughs> I also have this in my stash and then I guess I'm into blues see yeah you can you can really see which kind of colors I do like they look nice together don't they is this the thumbnail we'll see <laughs> oh oh my god I shouldn't have done that well now I have a big mess here I can I can tidy that up later well, yeah, I think that's all I wanted to talk about in this episode. I feel like I was kind of all over the place. I am, I'm just struggling with speaking English today. I don't know what it is. I'm so excited for everything that's to come. I'm so excited for my dress. I'm dreaming about my spring cardigan and going to the yarn store and spending more money. <laughs> I'm looking forward to my score that I can wear very soon. I just love knitting and I love to share this craft with you. Um, I would love to know what you are knitting on, maybe what you have been working on while watching this episode. <laughs> I do have to say I really enjoy this YouTube thing that I started. I really enjoy talking to you, hearing from you, spending some time here with you. I really feel like I'm talking to somebody, not just to my camera all alone in my room. <laughs> so if you do have any questions, you can leave them down in the comments. I will get back to you. If you're interested in any project in particular, you can check out my Ravelry. I like to document things a lot on there. You can also check out my Instagram. I do post some updates here and there. And yeah, the next video I am going to put out is the week of styling my knits. So this should go online next week. And then I will talk to you in the form of a podcast again in two weeks. Yeah. So I hope you do have like a nice rest of your day and can spend lots of quality time on your makes and i'll see you in the next one take care bye bye